Hi, today we are going to work on crafting a summary for the article from Z's to A's, Adolescence and Sleep. So the first thing that we need to be thinking about is our introduction, which we have broken into a few different parts here under number one. So topic, when we think topic, we're thinking big, big ideas, umbrella ideas that can cover a lot of smaller ideas. So for the topic for this article, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say, let's call it sleep. Simple, it's a big idea, we can work with that. Um, after that, we have the title, which of course is up at the top of the page. And now we have to think about text structure. Um, the structure for this particular article is problem and solution. So a problem is stated and several ideas or perhaps one idea um, is floated as potential solutions. Pretty simple and straightforward this week. And finally, our author's purpose. Anytime we're talking about informational reading, the author is trying to inform. Okay, now we're on to a much, much more complicated concept. The central idea, the main idea, the big idea. So, um, as we've done before, we're going to use my favorite hack for locating central idea, or for at least narrowing it down. We're going to look at the very first paragraph of the article and the very last paragraph of the article. Now, um, I have read this a number of times at this point, so I can pretty much summarize it as we go. Um, what I do want to point out is that this first introductory two paragraphs is sort of about the making of this documentary and isn't specifically about the content of the article itself, although it's definitely worth reading. What I'm really interested in is the section underneath the subtitle, The Biological Clock. Um, so I'm just going to quickly summarize this. And I think that the gist of it is that researchers always believe that the more tired you were, the more sleep that you needed or uh, that the body would automatically allow you to get enough sleep to replenish. And what they've discovered with research is that um, teens, especially between the ages of 10 and 12, are experiencing something called phase delay, which keeps them awake when they should be tired, which is a huge problem because teens need about nine and a half to a nine and a quarter hours of sleep a night. Um, so among other issues, such as after school activities, early school start time, teens um, are having a hard time getting that enough sleep. And then they end up in what the article phrases as sleep debt. So let's go to the last paragraph. I kind of I went over the first paragraph there. I sort of summarized the whole article, didn't I? So the very last paragraph, such a wealth of information, because a good author is going to summarize everything for you in a way that's simple and consolidates what we've learned. So let's go ahead and read this. Sleep research not only points out the importance of sleep to teenagers, but explodes some of the myths around sleep, principally the idea that people need less and less sleep as they grow up. There are many factors in the lives of adolescents that elude their control. Sleep is one area where the lessons are clear and the benefits of following them are quickly apparent. Okay, so what we know from this last paragraph is that sleep is incredibly important. Um, and if we go back into the rest of the article, we know that sleep is absolutely vital to learning and to, to memory. We have a, a subtitle here, um, and if we're looking for more information, we could go into this section of the article. So I think I have enough to get started on a central idea. Um, I know that it should address the problem and the solution. So I think I'm going to start with the idea that, and I can always cross this out and start again if I find this isn't working for me. Um, let's say teens can't learn if they don't get enough sleep. Pretty simple and straightforward, right? Um, we know that the problem is that teens can't get a, cannot learn um, if they don't get enough sleep. And in terms of a solution, I don't know if I have to spell it out. It's inferred that when they do get enough sleep, 
it's easier for them to learn. All right, so on to our supporting details. I need to think about problems and solutions. So the problem is that um, teens are sleep deprived. We get a whole lot of that in the article. Um, we know that because of phase delay, when they should be going to bed, most teens are awake. They don't get to sleep in because they have to go to school right away in the morning. And um, there's also some issues with after school activities and the, the demands of family and social time. So I think for supporting detail number two, I'm really gonna focus on building my case that sleep is absolutely necessary for learning. Um, and I'm gonna return to that really, really technical section of the article where it talks about the types of sleep that a teenager needs in order to learn effectively. Um, okay, so let's say the brain consolidates and um, so the article says practices. I like the word rehearses. The brain consolidates and rehearses um, learning during two types of sleep. I'm going to do a little colon there. I'm going to get fancy. Slow wave and rapid eye movement, which I am going to use the acronym for rapid eye movement. Okay, now we are on to our last supporting detail. So we've got the problem, teens are sleep deprived. We've got a little evidence about to support the idea that learning takes place during sleep. Now I need something that addresses the solution. And I'm thinking about that last section about um, ways that teens can get more sleep, better quality sleep. Um, and we know that teens need about nine and a quarter hours. So I'm gonna start with that. Um, I could do this a lot of ways. I could say um, teenagers should turn off their electronics before going to bed in order to get nine and a quarter hours of sleep. I could flip it. In order to get nine and a quarter hours of sleep, teens uh, should turn off their electronics before going to bed. I think I'm going to go in that direction. But what I wanted to show you there is just me sort of talking through what's going to sound best for me. Sometimes we have so many ideas in our head and the only way for us to start to organize them is to just say them out loud and talk through it. Teens can get nine and one quarter hours of sleep by turning off electronics whoops before going to bed. So as I look at this, what I'm noticing is that this is only one solution for teens to get enough sleep. Obviously, there's a number of reasons we, we don't get enough sleep. And this seems a little too simplistic for me. So I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to change the beginning a little bit. I'm going to say that one way that, and of course, instead of a capital T, I need a lowercase t, one way that teens can get nine and a half hours of sleep is by turning off electronics before going to bed. Okay, so we've got our introduction. We have our topic sentence or central idea. We have three super solid supporting details. Now we need to move on to our conclusion, and this is the part that you are going to work on independently this week. So the conclusion restates the topic sentence. I don't want you to give me the exact same sentence that you used at the beginning of the summary. I want you to restate it. So you might choose to uh, use some synonyms in place of important words. You might choose to flip your subject and object. Um, so instead of saying teens can't learn if they don't get enough sleep, you could say something like, 
sleep is important um, for teens to learn. You get the idea. So you're going to do that, and then you're going to go back one, two, three, and four in order to craft your summary in paragraph form. So uh, this has been just a real quick tutorial to get you back um, into the loop in terms of summarizing the article Adolescence and Sleep. Don't forget to uh, write in complete sentences throughout the graphic organizer, and then you can just um, transfer it right into your summary. It's going to be really easy and simple for you. All right. Well, I look forward to reading your summaries later this week.